everyone and welcome to the Yonder Woman podcast, episode 70. My name is Melinda. You can find me as Yonder Woman on Instagram and Ravelry. And on Ravelry, you can also find our group for the podcast, which is Yonder Woman podcast. You can search under the groups tab if you haven't already joined us. Please do. It's lovely to have you. Today is Thursday, the 1st of March, 2018. And as always, I'm coming to you from Perth in Western Australia. I hope you are having a lovely day or evening or morning, whatever ever time of the day it is for you. I hope you're having a great time and I thank you very much for spending some of that time with me. Um, today I haven't got my studio lights set up because um, it's a bit of a busy day. Um, it's my fortnightly day off. I work full-time hours but over nine days um, and today's my day off. I've just had a lovely catch up with Becky from the Wrapped in Wool podcast. Um, we caught up a couple of weeks ago. Um, sadly this will be our last catch up because she's going back to the States but Hopefully we'll see her again in the future. But I had a lovely catch up with her this morning and her little boy. Um, and then this afternoon I've got a whole lot of other things to do. But I really wanted to show you all my finished objects. I've got quite a few things um, in the works. Or sorry, had them in the works and now they're off the needles. So I wanted to be able to catch up with you and show you those. So I think the lighting will be okay. Um, it's obviously coming more from this side. I'm sitting um, as close to the window as I can. Um, but I think the knitting will still show up than fine but I apologize it's not my usual lighting setup. We won't do a full broaching the subject segment because I sadly don't know where um, I got this brooch from on Etsy but here it is. Oh dear the lighting's it's knit and it's all hand stitched. Oh and I've got a Wonder Woman shirt. Mm. So you know I think I well I know that Yonder Woman knits because it was in one of the comics but um she definitely knits on my shirt. <laughs> But as I said, I've got lots of finished objects to show you, so let's dive right into those. So these aren't finished, 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 how many finishes the, the Knitmore girls put into it, but the knitting is finished. These are the snake socks, aka, or the official title, the No Heel Pearled Socks. Oh, I can never remember the wording. I do apologize. Um... No, ribbed no heel sock. That's the one. So, da -da. these are for my nephew, Yander nephew, and uh, it's his birthday in a couple of weeks, so I'm finished well before, which is just wonderful. It's so, such a nice feeling to not be um, knitting to a deadline that's really close. I'm really pleased. Um, thus far this year, I've been working really well with that. Um, and I think one of my soon to be cast on whips will work even better. I'm gonna cast on a pair of socks for the Yonder team for her birthday, which is not till July, so I'm doing well. But back to these. So, two done, two snakes, and the colors match pretty well. So, to just remind you, or if you haven't seen before, the bottom, the toe of the sock is knit in uh, Berger de France, Gumi 50, in the aluminium colorway. And I used that because it's a much toothier yarn, so I wanted some um, a bit more structure on the foot for where you know big toe gets pushed in by um, a soon-to-be eight-year-old. Needs a bit more structure. And then the stripes are Knit Picks for Leechy in the Spring Blooms colorway, but all the pink had been taken out to go into um, another project, and I'll tell you more about that one later. You've already seen the finished project, but it was uh, given to someone, so. Um, more on that later but yes so the five colors out of that colorway with the sixth being the pink and I had had all the yarn because I'd been cutting out the pink just in little balls and then some of them didn't have all the colors so it worked out pretty much the same on both socks you can see we've got blue 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 but then there's no more blue going up the top here and you can also see here that the colors kind of match but they're a bit different and then here um, there's really thin stripes of some of the colors so towards the end on the second sock um, I was having to use lots of little little bits that had been cut off but it was all in all the same amount all I was going to do if I didn't have enough of the stripes was just do a longer yellow section um, and that's a Knit Picks yarn as well that's the dandelion colorway Knit Picks stroll um, and it's coming out very neon on the screen, but it's not quite that neon. It's much, it's a more buttery yellow. Um, but yeah, all in all, it worked out perfectly. You know, the fact that the colors don't match 
exactly the same is fine. Um, Liam, the under nephew, is not going to care. I think once it's on, you won't be able to tell that much anyway. So that's the bit there where you see these stripes are thin and then the next bit of yarn went back into the previous colour that was on the other ball. Don't care. Doesn't bother me at all. I think they're really cool. I'm really happy with how they turned out. Um, and I'll be giving them to him in a few weeks. So I'll make sure to get some good photos because he's always very appreciative of knitted items. Last year I knit him some socks and when he opened the package he went, Yay, yarn! That's my boy. Yes, yes. <laughs> So yes, very happy with these and I definitely want to make another pair um, but not quite yet because it's a 3x3 three three rib for the whole sock. Um, I might just do some plain stockinette socks just for a little break. But yes, definitely recommend this pattern. So next cab off the rank is another project I showed you last time that I'd, I think maybe just cast on. Um, and it's this one. This is the... Goodness, I'm just having trouble with the names of things today. Terribly Simple Shawl. It's a terribly simple title too. Can I remember it? Mm, apparently not. But <laughs> this pattern is by the lovely Caitlin French and it's a free pattern. Um, so it's very generous of her to put it out as free. Actually, so was the, the mm, No Heel ribbing socks. The ones I just showed you. Moving on. Yes. So... <laughs> This is a project I've made for charity. So this is a Knit Picks yarn. It is the Stroll Worsted in the Delft Heather colorway. So it's a beautiful heathered blue. Um, and the Terribly Simple Shawl, as I said, it's free and it's just essentially teaching you the um, premise of a crescent shaped shawl. So I haven't really blocked mine in a crescent. I've done it more sort of bandana style, I suppose, with the point at the bottom and a relatively straight edge, um, just so I thought it might be a bit more wearable because it's going to be um, going to charity. I thought that way it gives a bit more, a few more options. Um, so yes, the premise is you just cast on and then you're just doing an increase at the beginning and end of each row and then it increases out to the shape. I just used up all the yarn I had in this color and I had, I believe, a full ball and then two partial balls left. So there were three joins in the end. I have cut all the ends off as you can see. Um, so I just kept knitting till it stopped, joined, so even in the middle of a row I didn't worry about doing it at the end. Um, and it was a great project. I took it with me to an outdoor concert I went to a couple of weeks ago um, and it was quite dark so um, the increases you're doing at each end are a knit front and back. So I actually found after a few rows, even without being able to see very well, I could feel in my hand when I'd reached um, the previous increase, knowing that the one after that was um, the new increase for that row. Um, I did have a stitch marker at each end. I lost one at one point because it sort of flung off, but I did find it, so it's okay. Um, so other than perhaps the beginning of the row, having to do two and then hooking my stitch marker over, um, that was the only slightly tricky part. I knit this on, I think it was 5.5 millimeter needles, and the stitch marker was perfectly um, fine to go across. But I think had it been, if the ring of the stitch marker had been a little bit bigger, it would have been easier to flick it on. But you know, that's by the by. It was just that it was dark. It made it just that slightly little bit tricky. Um, so yes, it turned out really nicely. I think it'll just be, you know, something nice to wrap around the neck. As I said, it's going to charity, so I hope it is uh, well received. I'm sure it will keep someone nice and warm. And um, the Knit Pick Stroll yarns just soften up so much. You know, they're quite soft beforehand, but um, really, really soft and lovely. So very happy with that one. Another charity hat, or charity project, but it is a hat. So this is also Knit Picks. <laughs> Let me see. Amethyst, Amethyst Heather. And dove grey heather, I believe, are the yarns. And the purple is um, a worsted and the grey was a DK. So again, I just knit until I'd pretty much used all of them. And then what I did was, da -da, I've made a pom-pom. So um, as you can see, I did, I had less of the purple available than I did the grey. So I'm very happy with the pom-pom, but the problem is I didn't leave myself enough of a tail to now... Um, attach it to the hat. I mean, it's long enough, maybe? I don't know. Does anyone have any pom-pom advice? Should I sew in with like a needle, sew in another piece 
of yarn into it to give me more maneuverability. I'm not sure. So I will see. And um, I'll be, sorry, I'm like putting it on the hat and you can't see it. There we go. So <laughs> I think that will look really cute no matter which way it's worn. So no matter which way the pom-pom goes, whether there's the, the purple showing or if it's just a little bit more subtle that way. Um, but yes, very happy with that. Very excited by my pom-pom. Um, the maker was really easy to use, as you will have just seen, and um, I'll definitely be making more of these. I'm thinking they might be good for Easter presents, like just to make pom-poms, maybe make a little garland or, um, I don't know, stick eyes on it or something. We'll see. But yes, very happy with that. So I've got another, another project ready to go to charity. And while we're on the topic of charity hats, here's another one. <laughs> um, I just actually finished this today when I was um, out with Becky. So um, it is literally freshly off the needles. This is, um, again, knit picks, my goodness. I'm not sponsored by knit picks. I just have a lot of it. And it's good for, um, for charity projects because it's um, very soft, as I said, but it's, you know, a bit more hard wearing as well um, in terms of... Um, care needs, you know, because it's commercially produced, it's not, the dyes aren't going to be as, as delicate as perhaps a hand dyed yarn, that sort of thing. So that's why um, it's good to use for charity. That's not to say I would never use a hand dyed yarn for charity, but um, for things that maybe, you know, need to be a bit more rough and ready, it's good to have. So this I've actually got, I'll show you in in my project bag, there's a whip as well. <laughs> um, three balls of yarn going for this or was using for this so you can see there's three tails there so two in the peacock colorway of knit pick stroll glimmer oh gosh sorry about that lighting ah, anyway so that color is this one here so lovely glimmer so I've got two of those and then one of this green the rainforest heather um, and so I think they work really really nicely together um, you can see um you know the different shades i think if you look there you can you see more green than blue but the tones are so similar that it really works as a whole as well as when you look at it and can see the differences um which is really cool it's like oh look at that it's different um, but i think overall it's not perhaps as um you know it's definitely not as stark as this which was two colors held together um, you know, it's much more subtle. Um, I think both are lovely in their own way. It's just something different. Um, and, you know, because they're going to be um, for charity, um, obviously want to appeal to many different tastes because there are many different people who might be receiving them. Um, I did a rolled brim. That was because, again, I thought different people like different styles. But if I'm honest, it was because I didn't want to do the ribbing because my smaller size needles were not immediately handy when I was ready to cast on. Um, and I was casting on in a hurry because I needed something to take for my commute knitting, um, which is how this got born. I just grabbed some yarn that was ready to go. That's another benefit of the commercial yarns that are already in a skein. Um, ready to go. I had some needles, rolled brim, I think. Nice look. Good for, <laughs> good for a quick project as well. Um, so this one, I've, as I said, literally just finished. So I haven't woven in the ends yet. Um, haven't blocked it, but very happy with it. And I think the bit of sparkle just gives it that nice little touch. So the next thing I'm going to show you, I don't have the object here and I have shown it to you before, um, but there were some blue socks for Yanda Mum. So I took a little bit of a video when I gave them to her. So here you go. <laughs> so Yanda Mum, do you like your new socks? I love them. They're stunning. <laughs> what do you like about them? The best thing is Melinda made them. Aww. You want to hold them up? So... Blues, kind of your colour if we look around your bedroom. We just pan back here and see your blue walls and blue paintings and pictures and whatnot. Yes. So, should we put them on and then go to the cafe? Yes. Right. Say so goodbye. Will. Goodbye. Love you all. <laughs> She's just the cutest. She's definitely taken to poking her tongue out a lot lately, so yeah, whatever. It's all, it's all good. It's all funny. Um, but yeah, she's very appreciative of socks. Um, I definitely am planning to make her more socks and I'm thinking of doing the um, the three by three ribbed ones that I showed you earlier. Uh, Cause I think because they don't need a front and a back because there's no heel for them, that will make it easier for her putting them on um, if she's, you know, when she's dressing herself, when someone's not there to help her. Um, it's clarifying for that, for those who aren't aware, Yandamum um, is in the earlier stages of Alzheimer's disease. 
Um, so already things like putting on socks, she doesn't always realize there's a heel in a sock, so it'll be on top of her foot and things like that. Um, so yeah, having something where there's no front and back, I think will make it easier for her and more comfortable too. Um, but yes, I just need a little bit of a break on the continual ribbing of socks. I think some, some stockinettes for, um, as I said earlier, my, my daughter, um, will be more in line with what I'm working on right now, but more socks for yarn to mum soon. Okay, this finished object is not Netflix yarn, it's something different, finally. <laughs> Isn't this pretty? So this is a very beautiful and subtle skein of yarn from Skein Yarn, which is an Australian um, independent dyer. And this base, oh, so heavenly. It's 7525 Merino Nylon. Um, it's her top drawer sock base. It is just gorgeous, even before blocking, but then after blocking as well, just beautiful. So this is for my sister-in-law, Yanda Sill. Um, look at those speckles. It's a little bit more of a creamy tone in real life. It's looking quite pale on the screen. Um, but then it's got the speckles in there of the yellow, purples, blues. Um, and yellow is my sister-in-law's favorite color. So with all those yellow speckles, and it is a much more creamy tone, um, this is gonna be beautiful for her. This I used with yarn I've had for quite a while. And it was the um, rest of a skein that I had used previously when I knit her some fingerless gloves, which you'll see here. And that was many years ago. Um, so it shows you how long I've had this yarn, which is fine, but you know, it was a while ago. I was quite surprised when I looked it up on Ravelry to get the picture. Um, and for a while I've been thinking I would use the rest of this skein because she likes the yellows and it sort of really would suit her aesthetic. Um, and then I finally did. So I needed a project I could knit on easily um, to take to the Perth Writers Festival, which I attended last weekend. If you follow me on Instagram, and I highly encourage you to if you'd like to see more of my knitting, um, I was there all weekend and I had this project as my knitting. So this is the Knit Night Shawl pattern, uh, which I frequently make and I frequently use as my travel or event knitting because it's quite simple and you don't need a lot of focus on it now that I've made so many. Um, so yeah, most of this scarf has been infused with wonderful thoughts and voices and um, just a really lovely atmosphere. Um, so I had a wonderful time at the festival. Um, I got uh, photos of a lot of the artists, or the, the authors rather, um, holding my knitting, as I like to do. Um, <laughs> Um, and one of them, who was Gabrielle Wang, and um, she is a children's author, and she's written some books that my niece, Yan Denise, really likes. So I was getting her to sign the book. And when I asked her to hold the knitting, she said, oh, I know how to knit. And I said, oh, please, please do some stitches. And um, this is garter stitch, but she actually started doing pearl stitches, which I didn't care. I thought, no, that's fine. Because now it's got this wonderful little spot here where there's three stitches in stockinette. So it's almost like a little signature. And I think that's so fun. Really, really happy with that because this being for my sister-in-law, that's my niece's mum. So it'll be even more special because my niece can know that her favorite author knit on her mum's scarf. So very exciting indeed. <laughs> now I mentioned earlier, the project that I used the pink yarn on that I had removed from the skein um, of the Felici yarn. So that was some pink yarn. That was a another knit night shawl or scarf that I had knit for the author Sasong K. Misamang. And um, here's a photo of me with her. And she liked the scarf. Do you know what as well? Because I follow her on Instagram and I'd sent her a message um, after I met her previously when she held my knitting at um, the launch event. Um, when I walked up to the table, she goes, oh, you're Yonder Woman. <laughs> so she doesn't know me from my podcast, but she knows me because I've been possibly stalking her on Instagram. <laughs> but she was happy to know who I was. <laughs> but this is her book, Always Another Country. And um, I got her to autograph it at the beginning. And yes, she seemed very happy to receive the scarf. Um, I got to go and have my photo with her and 
Oh, it was such a wonderful event. Um, I'll put photos at the end of the video of me with the various authors. Um, and then, yeah, as I said, next time when I have a little bit more time to film, I'll, I'll have at the end of the episode um, my thoughts more broadly on the festival and I'll show you all the books I got because I bought quite a few books. Um, I really prefer audiobooks when I say prefer because um, that way I can knit while I'm listening to the book or I can take it with me when I'm you know, commuting or whatnot. Um, but not everything is available on audio, so um, it was great to pick up the books and support the bookseller that was there um, and, yeah, get get the authors to sign their books, which is very exciting. So, yes, this was a great project. I had a wonderful time knitting on it. Um, though I did show on Instagram the next day, so the festival was on Saturday and Sunday. I booked Monday off as a day of annual leave because I knew I'd just be exhausted from being so busy and full on. Um, but also because, you know, I had to do things like laundry and food shopping and, you know, all those exciting things. Um, and I had, I think I was up to, uh, maybe like, I don't know, four garter ridges less than I have here. And I was just looking at it going, I don't know if I want to keep knitting on this, you know, I've knit so much. Maybe I'll just use the rest of the yarn for, a, you know, baby hat or something. And then I just, you know, put it down and I thought, okay, don't, don't decide now. Maybe that was Sunday night. Um, don't decide now. And then on Monday I got up and I was like, oh, just keep knitting. It's fine. Just keep knitting. Um, and yeah, only a few gutter rows. But then I got, you know, I was thinking, okay, I'll bind off now. And I was like, I don't know if I've got enough yarn to bind off. <laughs> and I um, got some, the yellow that I used at the top of my nephew's socks, which is bright yellow, you know, it was showing neon earlier. I was like holding it up here going, oh, maybe it'll be okay. It'll bring out the yellow. And I went and asked Damien, my partner, um, who is an artist, and he just went, yeah, no, that's, that doesn't work. I'm like, Damn it. Because so, <laughs> usually I like to do the Jenny surprisingly stretchy bind off because I just find that makes it less, you know, tight. It doesn't pull it in. And I thought, I just don't think I'm going to have enough to do it. So what I did instead was I did a normal bind off where you know, knit one, knit another one, pass that one over. But I did it on five or 5.5 millimeter needles when the scarf was knit on four millimeter. So I went up to, yeah, I think it was a five. So I went up two needle sizes to do the bind off and it was fine. It's really good. And I haven't done that kind of bind off for so long. I forgot that if you do it on, depending on what side you start on, you can get this nice little stockinette um, effect on the bind off, which is fun. And that's how much yarn I had left. So maybe it would have been enough to do Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, but yeah, I don't actually think it would. It's really not much there at all because you know that you're essentially using a whole nother loop. So I'm very glad I did what I did. This can be used for you know wrapping a present or maybe just a few rows on something small. Um, so yes, all in all, yarn chicken went really nicely. It's very good. So you got a little sneak peek at my latest whip earlier when I showed you inside the project bag. So this is yet another hat. <laughs> um, it's because I was out with Becky and I was nearly finished on um, the, the hat I was working on. Um, I did bring some other needles with me and I at first was, I brought, what have I got here? A 5 and a 5.5. Um, these are Knit Pro Zings, I think they are. Yeah. And I just grabbed them before I left the house. So I was thinking at first, maybe I'll do a scarf to match that blue-green hat. And then I went to cast on and I was like, uh, actually, I don't know. Because holding the three strands together for the hats, and I'm using a 7mm needle, it is quite a loose gauge. You can sort of, um, uh, there you go, you can sort of see through it a bit. It's quite a loose gauge. Um, so I was thinking, well, on a going down several needle sizes to do a scarf, it's gonna to be too tight. And I thought, well, should I just hold two together? And I thought, I'm just not in the mood for that. So another hat it is. <laughs> um, it's essentially just, again, rolled, rolled brim. Um, and I think I cast on 64 for this one. I think the other one was maybe 56. I'm not sure exactly. The other one will be on my project page. Um, everything is on my project page on Ravelry. And I always linked that in the show notes which incidentally are at www.yanderwoman.blogspot.com.au. 
Um, so all the details will be there. And um, I'm just going to, yeah, keep knitting, do this other hat. And um, that'll just be another one for charity. I might do a pom-pom. I'll see. Um, I'm not sure. Here's the other one here. I'm not sure if it needs a pom-pom. I think with the rolled brim, it's quite cute just having it like that. Um, so it's obviously just stockinette. And the decreases, though, I did the same as from the pattern Rubies in My Pocket by Sally Jane Cameron. Um, but I didn't do any of the patterning because I just didn't. <laughs> and also I think holding three strands together um, for the lovely pattern that's on Rubies in My Pocket is a bit of finagling. It's very simple, but um, with having three strands, I think it would be more than doable, but just not, not as smooth as just stocking it. So, yep, I'll just keep going with that one. Um, this is just... Yeah, as I said, just to, to have something else to cast on, it'll be good for commute knitting with it being just plain. Um, but I definitely think I'm ready for another pair of socks. Hmm. But a project I've got for having in the house, because I don't want to be bothering taking this out and about, I've cast on the Amagansett dress, and this is going to be for the Yander team. Um, and I've done the first eight rows. Whee! <laughs> so this yarn, excuse me as I look in the project bag, on it picks. Um, this is Shine Worsted in black, and this is made out of cotton and modal. Modal is a fiber made from wood, I believe, so um, it's actually yeah, non-animal non fiber. Um, and I'm, I've chosen that to make it a bit lighter because it does get quite warm here. Um, so I imagine this will still be good for winter because it's the worsted weight is a bit thicker. Um, but the dress has... Um, stripes and patterns going down not patterns sorry stripes and different stitch patterns not stitch patterns stitches <laughs> stripes and different stitches so um, for example this is in stockinette I think the second color is in stockinette and then the third color is an accent in garter and the other two colors are going to be purple and red so it's gonna be quite fun um, as I said it's not one I'm going to take around because I have to keep swapping the yarns and because this is really my first adult garment um, it seems pretty simple from what I've looked over on the pattern, but I'd rather have it at home where I can be focused and not worrying about juggling colours and, and all sorts. So there's not um, going to be a huge amount of progress. I'm all tangled. <laughs> um, but again, this is going to be for her birthday in July. Although if it's finished earlier, she can probably have it earlier because then she might get more wear out of it. Just crossing my fingers that she will wear it, that she won't find it, you know, uncomfortable or that it fits wrong or whatever though. I'm just going to see it as an experiment, you know, um, is it my first garment? What will be will be. If it's too big, I suppose I might be able to adjust it like as if it's a sewn garment. We shall see. If it's too small, well, I <laughs> but yeah, that's going well. So those are my only two active whips at the moment, um, which is why I want to get a sock because this coming weekend, um, my partner Damien, I mentioned, is an illustrator artist. He's um, working at a convention. There's an anime convention on, so I'll be there all weekend with him helping him with his stall. So I need some easy knitting. Similar to what I did last weekend, I've got four weekends where I need easy knitting. So I think maybe a, a stockinette sock is going to be the go for that. Either that or another knit night shawl, but I'm not sure because I want it to be something um, that I, you know, want to make that's on my list, you know, something that I've got a, a recipient for. Um, alternatively, it could be some charity knitting, but um, I'm, I think I've definitely decided, I think I've definitely... Mm. Yes, I'm leaning towards <laughs> socks for the under teen. Um, so more on that next time. And the other thing that's on my whip plan is to do a blanket square. I think it has to be five by five inches. So 25 by 25 centimeters. Um, and that is going to be put together in a blanket by Evelyn of the Thistle Hollow podcast. I've only just found Evelyn and it was from her being mentioned by lovely Maria of the Ninja Chickens podcast. Um, and because of this project that Evelyn is working on. So she's putting together a blanket um, that she's calling or dubbing the uh, Sister Survivor Blanket and she's making it to send to the woman Rachel and I'm terribly sorry I've forgotten her surname but she was one of the main people who came forward in the um, just horrific case recently in um, the States where a doctor has been found guilty of um, abusing girls over his whole career. Um, and Rachel was one of the main um, people who came forward. So 
So Evelyn had this lovely idea to put together squares knit by people in the knitting community as a way of demonstrating, um, you know, solidarity and thoughtfulness for this very brave woman. Um, so Evelyn has videos where she talks about it um, specifically, so I'll leave, leave it with her to explain it better. So I think that's a lovely idea. I think it's um, a really meaningful project that Evelyn will be working on. Um, and uh, as I said, you get more information from her Ravelry group and on her podcast. Um, but she's happy to take any kind of designs, any kind of stitch, um, as long as it meets the um, measurement criteria so that she can seam them all together. I'm not sure what I'll do with mine yet. Um, I did measure pre and post blocking that knit night scarf I did to just sort of get an idea of um, what the gauge is for those needles and that size of yarn. Um, and I'll go from there. So it may just end up being garter in a pretty yarn. Not sure. Who knows? Um, but I'll show you that next time. So we've got our goals make along happening at the moment. So my goal this year was to knit a knitted dress. Knit a knitted dress, bit of a tautology. Knit a dress for the yarn team. Um, and obviously I'm not eligible for prizes, but that was um, my motivator to get that happening. So there's lots of people have been chatting in the thread. There's just one thread for the whole make along. So there's no, you don't have to finish. There's not a finished objects thread. Um, so go and have a look. There's some lovely things happening in there. Um, and the prizes I showed last week, but here is a photo of them. And the make alongs going until the end of March. So go and have a look if there's something you have been planning to make. It's on your goals list. Or if your plan to make is something looking at some yarn and going, I'd like to knit that right now, then that's a good plan too. So everything is welcome. So go and have a look. So as well as finding the Thistle Hollow podcast, another podcast that's on its way back with a new name is the Leaf podcast. And that is by lovely Ellie, who was formerly Gothheart Creations. Um, and same with her yarn brand was Gothheart Creations. And she is now Leaf Yarns and Leaf Podcast. So welcome back, Ellie. It is going to be lovely to see you. Um, and I'll put a link to um, her group as well as Thistle Hollow in the show notes. So that's really cool. I'm really enjoying... Um, watching podcasts when I'm getting time. I haven't had a lot of time lately, um, but I've been having um, a great time with audiobooks, still finishing Harry Potter. I've got about two hours to go. Um, and I've just started um, the one by Dr. Michael Mosley, where he talks about intermittent fasting. Um, I think it's called The Fast Diet, something like that. Um, because at the Perth Writers' Festival, um, I spoke, uh, sorry, I heard from um, a famous chef um, and a doctor as well who are doing a lot of research into how to avoid Alzheimer's. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Yandamam has Alzheimer's disease. Um, so that's something I'm really keen to um, avoid and to be as healthy as possible. Um, so the chef in question is Maggie Beer. If you're in Australia, you know exactly who that is. She is hugely well-known, wonderful person. Um, she was Senior Australian of the Year a couple of years ago, which is actually how she and the doctor met. Um, and Yander Mum got to meet her as well. So so here is some footage of not only Yander Mum meeting Maggie Beer, which was just gorgeous. It was hard to tell who was um, happier about it because <laughs> Yander Mum's just so gorgeous. Um, but I took my camera with me, so I did a little bit of vlogging. Um, you can see my knitting in progress as we go along. Um, so here's some footage from the Perth Writers' Festival. Here we are at Perth Writers' Festival. We've got two full days. We're looking forward to the fun. It's fat, so I tend to absorb.
So this is a Banksia plant and it's quite a quintessential Australian plant and flower. Um, here we've got a dried one and the May Gibbs stories and illustrations of the gumnut babies. The Banksia men are the baddies and um, these dried out ones um, are more what they're um, what they're based on. I know Shara from What Shara Made podcast doesn't like the Banksia men, so apologies, Shara. <laughs> but the flowers themselves, especially in the colour, even when they're in Banksia men form, are beautiful. But they're just lovely, as you can see here. Just the way it all expands out in this big beautifulness, and the lovely crinkly, sharp-edged leaves. Really, really beautiful plant. So this is near where I've parked my car at the University of Western Australia, which I will add is where I used to go to uni. Uh, that building over there is the Arts Building. It's where I did my Bachelor of Arts in English and History. And this is where we are going to be having the Perth Writers Festival. Might be able to hear some magpies or crows. No, sorry, not magpies. They're crows in the background there. And the grounds here are just stunning. And the vegetation is just beautiful. One of the very cool things about the arts building at UWA, University of Western Australia, is that there are peacocks living here. So these ones would be descendants of the ones that were around when I was at uni. Um, but I think it's just amazing and so wonderful. Lovely blue bin there as well, some great background. <laughs> so that's the end of day one of the Writers' Festival. Um, I'm just taking a little bit of a sit down. I've um, got some very interesting sculpture work behind us there. Um, the sign tells me it's called The Gift from the Gods. Um, there you have it. It's lovely. It's interesting. Um, what I'm going to be doing now, uh, instead of just heading home, I'm heading into the city and the Perth Fringe Festival is also happening. So the Perth Writers Festival is part of the main Perth Festival and then we have the Fringe Festival and I'm going to see a work called 30 Minute Macbeth. Um, which should be fabulous. I'm going to go with my cousin. Um, if you've been watching a little while, you'll know um, I have previously mentioned my love for Shakespeare in general, but Macbeth particularly. Uh, so I'm very much looking forward to this show. Um, and I'm going to do a bit more knitting uh, before it starts. I've got my knitting here. Um, I put a little progress keeper on earlier. So you can see here, I got quite a bit done today, which is exciting. Um, it's fabulous to just be able to knit, knit, knit throughout all the events and while I was waiting. Um, and it just, you know, it's funny how projects grow when you knit on them. Hmm. So I'm heading into the city now and I'll see you shortly. So I've arrived early for the show that I'm going to see and this whole area um, has been set up for various performances. So we've got this fake lawn put down, um, all these fantastic artworks put up on buildings that are just normally around and then all additional buildings that have been used for the pop-up. This kind of summer festival just, yeah, reminds me of summer. <laughs> um, so many events shows, concerts, you know, I don't get to see nearly as many as I'd like to because of, you know, life, normal commitments, normal finances, etc. But wonderful atmosphere, you can see part of the city through there. I'm going to find a nice place to sit and knit. So I found the venue that I am going to be seeing the show in, I'm here, the ramp. So that's been set up as a pop-up um, in this whole space. Um, I've got the generator right next to me, so that's making a lovely sound. It means I can't hear all the music that's happening a little bit further down, but that's okay. I found a nice shady spot. I've got my knitting. Um, I'm all set, and I'm going to just sit out here and have a have a nice scenic scenic knit, watch the, the world go by, and wait for my cousin to arrive. Hi, 
Yandamam. Hi, Manda. Manda. Whatever your name is. <laughs> so, who are we going to meet next? Maggie Beer. Maggie Beer, yes. And you're going to get, get her to sign your program. You're going to get to meet her. Wow. So this is day two of the Perth Writers Festival. I've just met this amazing woman. So Manal Asharif, Daring to Drive. She was instrumental in um, the campaign to allow women to drive in Saudi Arabia that, you know, only happened recently. So um, she was amazing. So we're gonna have a little bit of a sit down and then we're gonna go and meet Maggie. Uh, <laughs> there you go, would you mind signing it as well? There you go. <laughs> here, Mama. <laughs> here you go, Mama. Come over here now. Come over here. Yes. <laughs> so you've just met yeah, Maggie Beer. How do you feel? Pretty damn good. It was so exciting, wasn't it? Absolutely. She was gorgeous. Yeah, she put her arm around you. Yes. Oh, exciting. <laughs> So we're going to print out a photo of you and her at home mm -hmm. to put up at your home and we got both her and the professor who wrote the cookbook to sign your program so we can put that with the photo. Fabulous. How good is that? Wonderful. Alright, now we're going to have maybe some red wine. Are you going to some red wine? Mm -hmm. And then we've got a few sessions to go to. Alright, just a small amount of red wine. That's right, we'll have a small amount over repeated times. While we're here, Yandaman, what do you reckon of my new haircut? Um. <laughs> Yandaman is not sure of it. Beautiful. Oh, well, yes. like she is. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I love my daughter. She's the most beautiful daughter in the whole wide world. <laughs> I didn't know she was going to say that when I pressed record, I promise. <laughs> So we're back at Yandamum's house now. She's in her nighty. Um, it's only about 4.30 in the afternoon, maybe five o'clock. But um, we've had the bomb. Yandamum's ready for bed. And it's been a lovely day at the Writers' Festival. We've had a fantastic time. But I think it's time to have a little bit of a sit down now. Exactly. Yes. All right. Bye. Bye bye. Love you, everybody. <laughs> So that was very fun. Um, to end, I'd just like to mention that I am doing a fundraiser run. Yes, I said the word run. I am not a runner. I don't like running. Um, <laughs> several years ago, um, some people may remember and some people donated at the time, I did um, a fundraiser walk for the Alzheimer's Association. And this year I'm doing a run. It's not run just by them. It's called the HBF run for a reason. HBF is a healthcare provider that is the sponsor. Um, and so people join up, pay to join, and part of that money goes towards uh, charities. But then you select which charity you personally would like to fundraise for. So I am going to be running for Alzheimer's WA. Um, I'll put links in the show notes. If you are able to donate anything at all, the money goes to that exceptionally wonderful cause supporting people with Alzheimer's, promoting research into a cure in a prevention. Um, so if you are able to donate any money at all, it's all tax deductible, um, that would be hugely appreciated. I'm going to have to get training. Now, it's I will specify I'm in the jogging slash brisk walking category. So they have it where like, you know, if you're a seated runner, if you're an experienced runner, jogging, brisk walking, walking and families, I think with prams. Um, so yeah, I'm not, you know, let's not kid myself. I'm not going to suddenly become a runner, um, but I'm going to work at jogging, but my walking pace is pretty brisk. So I think I'm, I'm in a good place, a good starting place. Um, <laughs> I must say I'm a little bit surprised I signed up for a run, um, <laughs> but I'm really looking forward to it. I think that it's going to be, um, something to really kickstart my exercise because, um, something that the doctor, um, who spoke at the Writers' Festival about Alzheimer's was that physical exercise is a huge prevention. Um, you know, physical exercise can be a prevention for a lot of diseases and is just good for general health. So, um, but, you know, not being someone who likes intense exercise, I need to find my motivations. And for me, the motivation is hearing that it's a good way to prevent Alzheimer's as well as, um, 
you know, just general health. So this is going to be a great way to kickstart my, um, my health. Um, sorry, my exercise, um, looking into the intermittent fasting and all the health benefits for that, for particularly brain health, is really interesting as well. So I'm going to look more into that and I might speak to it more in a future episode if you'd like to hear. Um, but yes, wish me luck. Um, <laughs> I'm going to get um, sort of look into a training schedule and what I need to do to work up to. Um, because, oh, that's the thing as well. I signed up for the 12 kilometer category. So there's four kilometers, 12, and then a half marathon. You can't jog or walk in the half marathon. Um, but I thought, you know, let's let's push myself. I think a 4K brisk walk would be quite easy for me because I do walk a lot. Um, I said for me, I'm not implying that if it's, you know, a long distance for other people, that's more than fine. I'm talking about myself. Um, so I thought I would push myself and go the 12K and work up to um, the jogging. So... I went and saw my physiotherapist um, to give me some good stretches and how to protect my knees and, um, and that sort of thing. Um, so I'll put those into practice and we'll see how we go. So yes, if you're able to sponsor me even just a little bit, I would hugely appreciate it and the money goes to such a worthwhile cause, um, a charity that's going to help yonder mum more and more as she sadly progresses. So on that note, I'm going to sign off. So my apologies again for the weird lighting, um, but I thought it was better to um, get an episode and show you all these finished objects and have a bit of a chat rather than miss out altogether. So I'm off now to uh, do some shoe shopping with Deanda Teen. She's got her school ball coming up. So I guess prom would be the equivalent in America. Um, not sure what other countries call it, but we have the school ball for her final year of high school. Um, she wants purple platform shoes. I'm not sure we're going to find them very easily. We may have to compromise on some black shoes, but we'll see how we go. <laughs> um, I hope you're having a lovely day. Continue to have some knitting time if you can, or just some time to yourself. Even just some time to take three deep breaths. Just, if that's the only me time you get, that will still have a profound effect. So do that for yourself, um, if not something more. Thank you very much for spending the time with me. I look forward to seeing you again really, really soon. And until then, happy crafting. Bye-bye.